This person says, Pierce outsmarting Reigns with the Kevin Owens swerve was a feel-good moment and SmackDown. But are we really expecting anything revolutionary from this company for the next few weeks after seeing Roman's face and him fuming in the end? I detect a lot of heat coming. That's the thing. The storyline is ridiculous, okay? And somebody somebody actually on our board, I can't find it here, but they defended it. They basically said the story is that Roman wouldn't sign the contract. So the only way that they could get him to sign the contract was for Pierce to pretend that he was the opponent. And then after he signed, Pierce revealed that it was actually Kevin Owens. Okay. Like, if you want to accept that this deception on national television would hold up legally in court, that's fine. Okay, you can accept that. But it's like, that's as preposterous as anything else. So anyway, this would, would... I would forgive a lot if... At the Royal Rumble, Kevin Owens got his revenge, and he defeated Roman Reigns, and he won the WWE Championship. Okay? I would accept that, because you know what? However, whatever rigmarole you want to get there, if at the end of the day, I had to watch Kevin Owens get destroyed for three straight months, and at the end of the day, he finally outsmarted the heel, and he won the title from him, fine. Okay? But does anybody think that this last man standing match is going to end with Kevin Owens as the champion? If it does, great. But I feel because of the stipulation, this is going to be one of those things where a bunch of people, which by the way, everyone's interfering anyway. So why is the stipulation something where everybody can interfere? It's no DQ false can anywhere match. You know, maybe Apollo Cruz is going to show up and he's going to help Jey Uso and Roman Reigns bury Kevin Owens under the Thunderdome. I don't know, whatever. But I expect that Roman's going to win again. So that's the thing. The storytelling has to lead to victory by the babyface. And I don't think it's going to. So now I really can't. I guess in a vacuum that two to three weeks, I mean, they've done far worse chapters and in, in stories than what they did with Adam Pierce. My thing is just why we have to have the authority figure be dragged into a situation where the inmates are running the asylum. And it's, you know, it's kind of like when Lance talked about rules, you know, during his Q and a, and it comes up, you know, if, if the rules don't mean anything, how does it matter? You know, why does it matter if somebody breaks them or not? If nothing, if they always vary, if nothing really matters. And that's kind of the same thing with the authority presence with Adam Pierce. It was, I like Adam Pierce. I liked seeing him involved. The thought of a match with Adam Pierce, you know, part of it did make me happy. But you look at it, it's like none of this really makes any sense. And it also is a problem because it just shows how, how few opponents you have for Roman Reigns, how few stars yet you have. And, You're going back to Kevin Owens. Again, we all like Kevin Owens. Find somebody that doesn't like Kevin Owens who's not, I guess, Vince McMahon. But, like, everybody loves Kevin Owens as a a person, as a wrestling personality, all that sort of stuff. Nobody believes he's got a chance against Roman Reigns coming up here. This could have been a time maybe to put in a Nakamura, to do something else, to do something different. They didn't. They go back to Kevin Owens. Okay, how are you going to convince me that he's got a shot? They got a couple weeks to do it. I'll believe it when I see it. It's just... There's just uh, there's a lot of good with the Roman Reigns character and the story that they're doing and the, and the whole persona and the whole setup that they have. But it's just it does overshadow everything else. And when there's no authority figures on any show that actually matter, I guess that aren't Triple H. It's just I don't know. It, to me, to drag those people in and to make them part of matches and storylines, it's just it, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me as as much as trying to build up other competitors uh, to, to do pro wrestling stories with. Okay, so Billy K. Way too much about that. Got some Billy K. emails here. Billy K. is marginally a better wrestler than an actor. Her voice and entire character is go away heat for me. The one thing I'll say about WWE is they have an issue with heat versus go away heat, and they've got a few characters that like it's total go away heat for me as a viewer. Miz right now. And Corbin, when he has matches, which is sad because he's not a terrible worker, but man, they've 
They turn that guy into go away heat. Billy Kay's new character, total go away heat. I'm sure there's some others as well. And like, I mean, what's Billy Kay? I would say that it's not supposed to be go away heat. What's the payoff here with this Billy Kay character? She just goes out there every week and she's annoying. Like, is she going to get hers in the end? I don't think she's supposed to be like a heel. It seems like she's just a wacky baby face, right? I don't even know what's going on. She's just annoying. Maybe everybody falls out of the ring at, at the Women's Royal Rumble and her and Lana can be the only two left in there because that feels like the direction they're going. She's like, the, there's got to be like the big loser on SmackDown and she's just the ultimate loser with no friends that can't uh, hook up with anybody and everything else. I mean, again, why they decided to separate her and, and Peyton, I have absolutely no idea whatsoever, especially because Peyton was just, is she still in the weird mutton jeff tag team with uh what's her name uh you know who i mean the marine lacey evans lacey evans yes i mean are they still together as a team or is lacey just i don't know is it's, all of her attention fully turned on rick it, Blair it depends on on the week whatever they decide on any given week in the show brian elver is here wrestling observer live mike semper vv also of wrestlingobserver.com i don't know why i asked for something simple and people have to make it complicated i asked the Billy K better as a wrestler or an annoying manager? And this person just put yay or nay on Billy K. That wasn't the question. Right now, yay is at 55%, and nay is at uh, now 43%. So it looks like all of the yays are coming in here at the last second. Um, boss? Yeah. I, I know this is a radio show, so this is going to annoy a, a certain segment of our. our I couldn't even right keep now, a straight but... face. What are you wearing? What are you talking about? Did you, is that, does that go around like the, the toilet seat and you decided to put it around your neck? What is that? I think it's a lay. It's a lay? That's a lay? It's a yarn lay? Actually, I don't know what it is. I just found the most preposterous thing I could find. Is your neck warm though? Just for all you homies. Well, I meant more than just the law of averages there. But by the way, didn't you have a vest on when we started this show? What happened? Do you know anything about clothes, Mike? Oh, she wanted it back? No, I was cold, and I put oh. the vest on, and now I'm not cold, so I took the vest off. You want me to be sweating profusely here on the Why show? Why don't you just crank the heat up before the show begins in that room? The heat's on. It was just cold in here. Now I turn mm. on all the lights, and it's warm. This is basic physics. Basic thorough dynamics. Thorough dynamics? If you love these video clips... Head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Landstorm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.